Putin's invasion of Ukraine is his biggest ever mistake, and it will harm Russia for years to come. Russian President Vladimir Putin has been in power for more than two decades and has carefully cultivated an image of himself as a tough, strong man and leader, fighting for Russia's interest in reinstating the country as a geopolitical and economic superpower. Global leaders are gathering in Europe today to discuss the war in Ukraine and how to help the country survive Russia's onslaught, an extraordinary NATO summit in Brussels, as well as meetings of EU leaders and the G7. NATO is expected to commit to major increases in troop numbers along its eastern flank, as well as more arms and hum humanitarian assistance for Ukraine, although the military alliance has been reluctant to go further, fearing a direct confrontation with Putin and the potential for a nuclear response from Russia. But still, what will be the outcome of this unprovoked attack on Ukraine? Putin has made a big mistake to launch a war, to wage a war against an independent sovereign nation. And Putin certainly underestimated the strength of the Ukrainian people, the bravery of the armed forces there. He has also underestimated the way the entire world came together to denounce Putin. Well, not the entire world. China's ambassador for the U.S. couldn't bring himself to denounce Putin nor Russian aggression. Why can't you condemn this as an invasion? Mm -hmm. Well, let's don't be naive. Condemnation. It sounds naive to say that's not an invasion. It <laughs> doesn't solve the problem. <laughs> mm. The rest of the free world, however, dictatorships and communists aside, are united in their denunciation of this war on Ukraine. There's a fallout, however, likely to an extent Putin never, ever thought Russia would suffer. Their army is being decimated. Look at this video of a burning Russian alligator warship. Earlier today, a Ukrainian ballistic missile was fired from an Odessa beach. A ship, the Russian ship, the media, that media, that ship was part of Russian media, so proudly displaying on state TV just two days ago. Ukraine is saying that ship has sunk and two others now are under assault and likely disabled for the Russians. Yesterday, NATO confirmed there may be up to 15,000 Russian troops killed so far and nearly 25,000 injured or taken off the battlefield. Those are numbers that far exceed the losses Russia incurred in Afghanistan in over a decade of fighting there. Aside from the military losses, Russia may never be the same on the global stage. Under Putin's leadership and until now, Russia's economy had been prospering. Oil has been a lifeline to the Russian economy and prices were moving up before the war started. Russia was flush with cash, petrodollars, hundreds of billions of dollars of them. Putin had attracted extensive foreign investment into the country and exploited its natural resources, as particularly that abundance of oil and gas, as well as trying to diversify the Russian economy. But now Russia's economic misfortunes are once again misfortunes that Putin has brought on the country himself. The economy is already showing signs of collapsing under the weight of international sanctions. The ruble is crashing, worth about three quarters of a penny. The world's banking system is pulling out of Russia as well. Just today, the U.S. is sanctioning more than 400 influential Russians and freezing Russia's ample gold supply, meaning they won't be able to use it for U.S. dollars, which they desperately need to finance their own debt. Russia is on the brink of a major default on an interest payment because the payment is required in U.S. dollars and they just don't have access to the dollar, thanks to sanctions. The Institute of International Finance has said it expects Russia's economy to contract by 15 percent, shrink by 15 percent in 2022 alone, driven by both official sanctions and the self-sanctioning of foreign companies that have pulled out of Russia. That means Putin's war will wipe out 15 years of economic growth. Moreover, the impact on medium and long-term prospects is likely to be even more severe with a brain drain and low investment likely to weigh heavily on Russia for years to come. It's increasingly obvious that Vladimir Putin badly miscalculated. He appears to have sincerely believed the Kremlin propaganda fairy tales about the weakness of the Ukrainian military and the readiness of ordinary Ukrainians. In a word, Putin had drunk the Kremlin Kool-Aid. In addition, it seems Putin was unprepared for the ferocity of the international response or for the scale of domestic opposition to his invasion. Thanks to these catastrophic miscalculations, Putin now finds himself with no good options to end a war that is threatening to accelerate Russia's geopolitical decline as a great power.
Putin really overextended himself. We might be looking at the end of Russia as we know it, but if Putin does survive this, at the very least, we're staring down the barrel of a potential new Cold War, and at worst, potentially a world war between Russia and Putin's communist pals in China, North Korea and Iran, and the rest of the free world. And when backed into a corner the way that Russia, that Russian alliance will be, make no mistake, Russia will be the first to fire a nuclear weapon. We will have to finish it fast. To think this all never had to happen. Putin's ego war is the cause for so much death and destruction and so much more potentially, or should I say, Putin-tentially.